Hello everyone and welcome to AGCAD's webinar latest advances for wood and metal framing in Revit. Before I start, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me and can see my screen, so please raise your hands. You can do that in the GoToWebinar dialog on the right side of your monitor. Thank you for raising your hands. As I understand, you can hear me and can see my screen. Also, if you will have any questions, you can write them down in the GoToWebinar dialog under questions and in the end of the webinar, I will try to answer them. And now I can introduce myself. Uh, my name is Eve and I am an architect in the BIM application engineer at AGECAD. We create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of world's leading BIM practitioners and we eliminate tasks that do not create value. We've developed the widest range of TrueBIM software in the world for Revit professionals, covering wood and metal framing, precast concrete design, and MEP system design. And today I'm going to talk about our BIM solutions for wood and metal framing. So during the past year, we made over 40 updates to our wood framing and metal framing BIM software for designing walls, floors, and roofs in Revit. And today I'll go through the most significant ones. Right here you can see a list. And now let's open a Revit project. I have it prepared right here already. I've created a Revit project using just basic Revit's uh, walls, floors with openings added. And I have my configurations already set up and created. The families are loaded to the project, so we're ready to frame the walls. And the first feature that I would like to show you is a new option to fix and replace missing types in the configuration. So as you know, uh, the elements that we map in the framing configuration need to be present in the project. So if some elements are missing in the project, we get a missing types report. So right now I will open a configuration and you can see that in this configuration, element types are used that are not present in this project. Maybe I created in another project and now I want to use it in this project, but I cannot because the elements are missing. So previously we could only load these elements from the libraries or create new types if the family itself is in the project. But right now it's even more flexible because we can fix and replace missing types in the current configuration. So I will use this feature right now. And you can see right here I have a list of elements that are missing. So I can simply select new elements with which I want to replace these that are that are missing. And that's it. Now you can see that the configuration is opened, it's fixed, and I can use it. So it's really helpful. And also we can control the configuration visibility. So right now you can see all of the available configuration types for the frames, nailers, sidings, and even for the wooden logs. But if some of the configurations, uh, if I don't need some of them, I don't ever use them, I can hide them in the wall link and in the configuration window. So in order to do that, I can go to the configuration visibility tab and untick, for example, wood log and a horizontal siding, for example. Now I will save it. And if I close it and open it again, you'll see that I will no longer have those configurations in these options. And you can see that I no longer have horizontal siding or the wooden locks. And now let's take a look at the new features for modeling. So I will frame this wall and you can see that it has a joint opening and another opening right here. So these new features will be extremely useful for those that are working with pre-assembled openings. It will let you to make separate pre-assemblies for openings that are part of a joint opening and pre-assemblies will exclude other elements like for example here I have a top lid support that goes throughout both of them so this element will be excluded from the pre-assemblies but if elements are going only through that opening let's say window or a door they have separate headers they will be included into the openings pre-assemblies and also there is another option where we can add bridging blogging and nogging elements uh, only throughout the openings, like in this case, you can see it's added. 
and they will be included into openings preassembly if the opening is preassembled. So right now I will open this framing configuration and show you what was set up. So first of all, right here in the modify configuration settings, I have separate joint opening preassemblies, but I have it in another configuration uh, right here, separate joint openings preassemblies. So I have separate ones created for each opening. And also in the blocking and logging tab, I added another tab. I used short elements, added this element type, and also I aired it from the bottom as a bottom plate support. So you can see that's why it's aried. And another thing that I did is I set placement limits. So now if you choose one of these options for openings, only doors, windows, all openings, and so on, this element will be included into the preassembly if the openings frame itself is preassembled. So now you can see the result already. And the only thing that is left to do to see the actual result, we should number the elements before creating the assembly. Whereas if we, if we uh, create an assembly without preassembled openings, it's fine to number the elements after. Okay, so now you will see a result. Uh, a separate view will be created for each preassembled opening. The elements numbered. Okay, and now let's take a look under the assemblies. So you can see that the assembly for this frame was created. And as usual, I have all of the views that were predefined, like the 3D view, uh, the detail section view, uh, the frame front view is also here. And also I have detail views for each opening pre-assemblies. So this is the window that is joined. This is the door pre-assembly, and this is the window pre-assembly that is not joined. And you can see those bridging elements are included into the pre-assembly. So these are a few features for pre-assembled openings. And now we can move on to the secondary stud system. So with the latest version of wood and metal framing, you can align secondary stud system with the project base point. And in the past, this feature was available only for the mainframe. And with this feature, you can space and align all studs at the same time. Instead of directly defining the spacing only between the studs, you also define uh, the grid spacing. It should be the same as the stud and the function takes care of the rest. Studs from the mainframe and secondary frame system are positioned in the grid lines so that they always match throughout the whole project. So the spacing is not recalculated for each, each panel. It's uh, the same for the whole project. And now I will show you quickly, I will frame both of these walls. And you will see a specific layout that I created previously. So this feature is really useful when you have more complex configurations for your frames. You want to use uh, different sizes of studs, let's say each, each third or each second stud. You can see here that this is the main layout of my studs. And these right here are the secondary stud. So this is the secondary stud system, which is also aligned with the project base point. So you can see that all elements, they follow the same layout. And now we can take a look at the rules for this configuration. So right here, I have it created. And for the wall frame, I ticked on align with project base point tick mark. And you can see that I spaced my studs every 600 millimeters. And in the secondary stud system, I also added the align with project base point tick mark. I said that each time that the secondary stud intersects with the mainframe stud, uh, that the mainframe element will, would be deleted. And that's why I spaced them uh, only every second stud. So every second stud, uh, it gets removed. And that is how I get this result. We can also take a look at the free review and you can see that all elements are distributed like so. Okay, and moving on to the partial brace groups. So for this feature, I will open uh, the metal framing 
tool because all of these features are basically the same for the wood and for the metal framing software. So even though I'm showing you something on the wood, have in mind that it works for metal as well. And right now I will show you that a new feature called partial brace group lets you to create what we call a partial brace group. To use this feature you need to select four elements as bounds for the group, so two studs and two plates or two bridging elements and the bracing will be distributed only between those selected elements instead of to the whole wall height. And now I will choose add or modify bracing and the bracing was already predefined in my configuration, so I will use as add partial brace group. Now I can select two studs and two plates between which the group will be added, and that's it. Okay, add a partial brace group, and let's see now, I will add it right here. And that's it. Okay, and moving on to the minimum openings and special paneling layouts. So right now you can see that I have a few openings added to this wall. So I have a window, door, and a few system openings that were just added by modifying the profile of the wall. One of these openings is larger, another one is smaller, and now uh, we can in the framing configuration, we can set these limits so that if the opening is smaller than we predefined, it will not be framed. So the frame will completely ignore the openings that do not match the settings in my configurations. And you can see the result. So the window and the door, I can hide them right now. They were both framed as well as this system opening, but that one was not framed because it's too small. So again, we can take a look at the framing configuration and where you can predefine this. And it's right here under modify configuration settings. You can see settings for openings uh, that should or shouldn't be framed. So right now, the minimum system opening width or height should be 350. And you can see that this opening is smaller, so that's why it wasn't framed. Okay, and another great feature is for special paneling layouts. So now I will split parts for this wall and create the paneling. It will be created as parts category in Revit, so we will have to show parts in order to see them. Okay, so now I will turn on the parts visibility and you can see that they are created. So I will modify this paneling and show you what can be done differently. So right now in the paneling layout, I have special layout and I can enable it and I can choose whether I want to split by side of the openings, uh, split from the start or from both ends. So let's see now I will split by the side of the openings and here I can uh, enter the minimum distance from windows and minimum window width that should be considered while using this rule. And again, you will see that one system opening will be too small, so it will not split near this smaller opening, but it will split near other openings. And I also fit opening in complete segment so that uh, none of the openings will be split. Okay. And that's it. You can see the result. So the splits were added from this window, from this door, from this window, and they were not added through this opening that is smaller. So that is the special paneling layout. And moving on to the top and bottom cripples and updates by the database. So right now, we uh, enhanced the software so the newest version makes working with database configurations more efficient because you can link configurations together through all parts of your framing configurations to reflect changes made to any one database configuration. So now I will again open the framing configuration window and I will create a new database configuration that will be visible in all of my framing configurations. So I will go to opening framing and modify this configuration. And here, another great feature is that now we can create separate rules for top and for bottom cripples. If we untick this mark, 
that the top and bottom cripples are equal, you can see that another tab appears. So I have top cripple and bottom cripple, and I can see that I don't want to align the bottom cripples with the top cripples, and I can create separate settings. So I will also duplicate this configuration and create a new one for bottom cripples. Okay, I will choose it right here and I will create a different rule for it. So I will create a double bottom cripple and I will choose a different element size. I will also align them to the external side of the wall and I will save this configuration to the database. So now you can see the stick mark update by database and that means that this configuration will be visible in all other framing configuration configurations and that was not the case previously. So now I have this default configuration and this bottom cripple configuration. So now I can go to another framing configuration and again I can modify it and you can see that I have the one that I just created in a completely different framing configuration and also any configuration I can modify and the changes will also be reflected to all other configurations if this update by database tick mark is on. And also you should take another tick mark uh, before using this feature and it's uh, somewhere right here. Enable update by database and custom joins. That is when that tick mark will be visible. Uh, so now I created that new rule for the cripples and I forgot if I saved it that way so let's take a look top and bottom cripples no I did not okay very quickly again now you can see I already created so I don't have to redo the process I can just save it so that it would be added here and that's it now I can frame this wall and you will see that the bottom cripples will be different from the top cripples okay so now I will show the original view and you can see that this is my top cripple and I have double bottom cripples as well as that bridging and nogging that will be included into the preassemble. Okay and now we can take a look at the plates in the connections. So I will freshly frame these two walls and show you that a possibility to control the plates also the top covers and bottom pads uh, were added into the connections between the walls so now the walls will be framed by the settings made in the configuration you can see that this is the longer wall this is the shorter wall so the plates will extend up to where uh, the frame extends basically you can see everything is pretty simple but now we can also create different rules we can split the plates on a certain stud we can automatically shorten them by the wall that it's connected to this wall and we can also automatically lengthen them by the width of this wall and we can just enter uh, required values if we need to uh, for for lengthening or shortening them so now i will do this through the modify wall join but of course you can create this in the framing configuration so i will expand the plate parameters and you can see that i can control all of these uh, uh, top and bottom plates and also top covers and bottom pads if i have them so in this example i have the uh, right now the l wall so this is the longer wall and i will shorten the top plate and it will be automatically shortened by the wall that it's connected to it so I don't even need to calculate and let's see the second plate I will lengthen it so that you would just see the result so I will enter let's see 200 here and it will be longer and right here the bottom plate I will split up to stud number three for example and the second one I will split up to stud number four okay and you will see that this plate will be automatically shortened by the width of that wall 
Yeah, you can see it. This blade is extended, this is shortened, and the bottom blades are split. So this one is split up to stud number four, and this one is split up to stud number three in my connection. And also I can modify this wall and the only thing that I'm going to do with this one is I will lengthen that single top plate. So I just need to select lengthened and the value will be calculated automatically by the software. And you can see how much more flexibility you will have in these connections with the top bottom pleats, also bottom pads and top covers. Okay, and also the split elements functionality was increased. So we have added a new command that allows you to delete elements that were split. So I don't have an opening right here. All I did was I deleted the sidings. So I can repeat this result very quickly. So I can open the split elements menu and now I can use split bridging and nogging and I will select a few siding boards, hit escape and I can now select the studs by which these siding elements will be split. I can do the same thing on the other side. Again, now I can select another stud. The siding boards will be split like so. And now I can open cut, delete, move, and rotate elements menu and I can delete these siding boards. I recommend to delete them using these features and not Revit features because then if you will update the wall, uh, the elements will not come back. Okay, and that's it. Moving on to more possibilities for openings. So previously, you could assign different framing configurations only by the width of the opening. So if the opening's width is the same, you can assign only one configuration to all openings which width is the same. For example, these two openings, they have the same width, 900, but the height is obviously different. And let's say that I would like to use different framing configurations for these openings based on their type, based on their height. So in that case, I can write in a framing configuration to the openings type parameters. So now this configuration will be used out of the box. This is the one that is predefined, but I have created another one. And I will just copy the name of this configuration. I will keep this one assigned right here. And I will write in this name into the openings type parameter framing configuration. So I will now paste it, save it, and frame the wall. And now you will see that for this opening, uh, the tool will use the configuration uh, that is predefined in the main con framing configuration window and assigned in the wall link. And for this window, the configuration will be overridden with the one that is filled in in the type parameters. Yeah, and that's it. You can see that different configurations were used for these openings. So this has a different header, this is an L-shaped header, this is a box header, this one has a top support, this one doesn't. So you have more flexibility with that. And also, from now on, you can modify the paneling by choosing a completely different configuration. So now I can split parts for this wall and the parts will be split based on the paneling configuration that is mapped in the wall link. Okay, so now I will show parts and it's split, you can see, to the nearest stud from the opening, the splits were added. And now if I want to change this configuration, I can modify sheathing or paneling and I can not only change one small thing from this configuration like before, but I can choose a completely different configuration for this panel.
and that's it. The parts will be split differently, like so. And moving on to more possibilities for uh, for frames around openings. So right now, uh, you might have encountered a situation when you need to offset or cut the elements around the openings and that is when previously you should create uh, pretty complex rules with invisible elements so that the elements would be connected to those invisible ones for the offset to be created or for the frames to be cut but from now on you can add an avoid into your opening family and then in the framing configuration settings you can tell which framing elements should be cut by these voids. So now you can see that this opening, it does not have a void, whereas this opening does have it. It's an additional void added to the openings family. And the frame elements are not cut by this opening, but the sidings will be cut because that is what I asked in my framing configuration. So I will show you the settings right now. And right here, under modify configuration settings for my frames i have not added the tick mark to cut plates and sidings with additional opening wads that is why the frames are not cut but let's say that i do want to use this to cut the vertical siding and for the vertical siding configuration you can see that the stick mark is on, so the siding boards will be cut by that void. And we can set this for other layers as well, like sidings and so on. I meant nailers. And now I will frame the additional layers for, let's say, both of these walls. So now the tool will frame all of the additional layers like secondary frames, vertical or horizontal, sidings, and nailers. And then you will see that the siding boards will be cut for that opening that contains the additional void in it. Okay, and that's it. Both of the walls have all of their layers added. They're automatically aligned with the frame. And for this opening, as you can see, that has the additional void, sidings were cut around that void, like so. Whereas for this opening, they were not cut because it does not have the void. Okay, and now let's take a look at the middle stud. So I have this wall already framed and I marked the center of this wall with this DT line. So you would see where the center is. And with this new feature, we can easily add studs right in the middle of the wall or the wall panel. So I'll do this for the Modify tab. It's in the Rich Stud tab and we have a middle stud right here. So now I don't have a middle stud, so I will add, let's say, a double element right here. And I will choose a different element type. And it will be automatically added to the center of this wall. And that's it, I have these, this double metal stud added to my wall. Okay, and now we can take a look at framing in groups. Actually, we have hosted a separate webinar for this feature, so if you are interested in it, I highly recommend to watch that webinar. But this feature will be especially beneficial for Revit users who work with large projects or projects that contain mirror building parts. So the framing in groups command allows you to frame walls in groups, walls that are group may be used uh, to repeat and also mirror framing many times throughout a project and incorporating this into your workflow has the potential to save a lot of time. So first of all, I can open the plan view and open the framing in groups menu. So I will quickly show you a few features. But as I mentioned, you can watch a separate webinar for this and I will select these walls and create a group. Okay, so I will create new group number five, for example. And now I will select it and I will mirror it. And I will also copy it. So you will see that it works 
with mirrored and copied walls. I will now go into the 3D view. Okay, maybe the section box is a little too small for this. Okay, that's fine. And now I can simply frame a wall that is in the group and the frame will be repeated throughout all other groups that are the same, whether they are copied or mirrored. This wall in each group was framed and it's a lot faster than framing them one by one. Then also anytime we can add walls to the group. So for that I will select the group and the walls that I want to add to it and you will see that these walls will be added to the remaining groups. Okay and you can see that they are added like so and now I will frame another wall from this group. The frame again will be added and repeated throughout other groups. And now you will see how this feature is a real time saver. Because if we decide that we want to modify the frame and we have, let's say, uh, 20 groups that are the same, we can modify it only one time. So now if I want to modify something for this wall, I have to remove this wall from the group before doing that. So I will remove it and now I will modify it by, for example, adding some additional elements. Okay, so I will add additional bridging, blocking and nogging between, let's say, these two studs. I will add short elements, align them to the interior side of the wall. I will add two rows and change the spacing of these two rows a little bit. So you will see now that additional elements will be added to this wall. And I need to make this change only one time because now again I can just re-add this wall to the groups and if I have a lot of groups uh, that are the same in this project uh, that will save me a lot of time. And okay my window got stuck so I will open it Again, okay, framing in groups. Okay, and I can again add walls to the group. I can select the group, then select the wall. Yeah, and that is the result. Okay, and now I would like to show you that we've made some updates to the Roof Plus. Okay, so in the Roof Plus, the number of families was reduced, but now they are more flexible and intelligent than before. The new families are easier to use uh, than the old ones that they have replaced, and you'll find that they greatly expand your framing possibilities. Uh, for example, the new cutting technology. It allows you greater control over uh, joist ends and it's a quick and flexible way to work with elements ends. And these are just a few examples. I highly recommend to watch a webinar that I hosted only about this topic and how to create these different cuts. But let me show you a few examples right now. So you can see here that I added uh, this void cut family to create this cut. These parts are aligned and of course you can control all of these dimensions in the type parameters of the joist. So now you can see that these are these values. That's why it's cut like that. Also this cut is vertical uh, to the roof. This cut is uh, 90 degrees to the slope of the roof. Now another one that is more interesting, this is a diagonal cut and again the boards are aligned and all of these dimensions can be controlled. Right here you can see 800, that is why the cut is like that, so everything is parametric. I really recommend to watch that webinar to understand how these features work and this is another one. We can add even these kind of cuts with vertical boards. So this board is actually included into the cut family. Again, all of these boards are aligned with the joist and with the angle.
Okay, and now let's move on to the documentation. So right here, we have already framed both of these walls previously, and now I can split the parts for them. So the parts will be split and the sheeting or paneling layers will be created. And also before showing you the features for documentation, I will number all of the elements in my project. So the walls were already numbered and now after the walls are numbered, I can number the elements because then they will inherit the wall mark parameter value and they will know in which wall they're located. Okay, and finally, I will number the parts. And the first thing that I want to show you is a really interesting update uh, to our sort mark tool. So I will open the sort mark. It's under the documents tab. It's, it's right here. So now you are able to generate QR codes or barcodes that can be placed on your shop drawings. Since you can place anything you need into the QR or barcode, the possibilities are vast as it can assure better quality control, enhance collaboration between teams or speed up the manufacturing process. So before creating those, I created a really simple schedule for my walls because in this example, I will I want to create barcodes for assemblies, but but uh, it's actually much easier to create them for the walls and then include the wall into the assembly in the framing configuration and and we will basically have uh, assembly QR. Uh, codes and right now I've created this simple schedule where I just added an image uh, Instance parameter for the wall right now. You can see that I don't have anything and I will create them with the sort mark tool so I will go to the QR or barcode generator and I will generate these images for the walls category as I mentioned, but you can also choose parts or structural framing elements Okay, and I will use that image instance parameter. You can also, of course, create your own parameter for, for, the, for the barcode. And I've created a simple configuration where I added the wall mark instance parameter based on which uh, the sort marks, uh, the barcodes, I'm sorry, will be generated, the QR codes. You can also add some prefix, suffix, uh, and so on. And now I will just click on OK. And that's it. You can see that the tool uh, just generated all of these images for my barcodes. And then in the shop drawing configuration, I mapped this simple schedule that I created into the shop drawing configuration as a template. You can see vertical siding configuration, schedules, and you can see that I added it as a schedule view template. So now this a QR code will be generated for each assembly. So let's see how it works. I will create an assembly for this wall. So as always, all of the views and schedules that were set in the drawing configuration will be generated automatically. Okay, and that's it. I have an assembly for wall number 53. So let's take a look under the assemblies. And here again, you can see all of the views that I can create, like the free views, uh, the assembly front views here, detail section view, assembly front view with all of the openings dimensioned, all of the structural framing elements dimensioned, and also I will show you other views later, but we have this. QR assembly for this particular wall. And here, if I'll add it on the sheet, you'll see how it looks. And it will be generated for each separate assembly. And now let's take a look at some other features for the documentation and then we'll create another. Uh, assembly. So first of all, you can add more dimensioning uh, tabs for same category elements. So for this, I will 
directly work in this window because it's much more comfortable to modify the dimensions like that. And I will use Modify Dimension, select one of these, and you can see now that I can keep adding these dimensioning tabs for structural framing elements. And I can cr create multiple rules with different kinds of filters and settings for each tab. And right now I will let's see add another dimension for structural framing elements. So you can see that in the bottom right now I have two uh, dimensions. Uh, one is dimensioning the structural framing elements and it's a linear dimension. So let's say that I need another dimension that would be uh, ordinate. So I will go to vertical elements. I will not dimension horizontal ones again. Uh, in this case, I don't need to measure element sections in this one. All I need are vertical elements instead of linear. I will add an ordinate dimension type. I will save this configuration and the settings will be saved for the future. So I need to modify this only one time. And that's it. You can see that now I have another dimension that is ordinate. And also, if the ordinate dimension name contains flipped, the dimension will be flipped automatically. So now it's numbering from left to right. And I can, I can number the elements, uh, dimension the elements from right to left. So again, I will modify this dimension. And by the way, the same thing applies to the uh, vertical dimensions. Up and down or down and up. So here I have this third dimension and I already created a type. It's the same thing. It's the same ordinate dimension, but this one you can see it contains flipped in the name. So again, I'll save it and you'll see that now the zero will be here. And that's it. Okay, so another thing that you may already notice is the ability to add a total uh, diagonal dimension and this is added right here under configuration settings you can add a total diagonal dimension to your frame and also from now on we will be able to automatically dimension part openings so right here you can see uh, that parts are split and that is actually extremely useful when uh, the opening for the part is a different size than the frame because then we cannot we couldn't measure the opening so if you would have offsets right here uh, this feature will greatly benefit you so right now again i could modify the configuration but actually i cannot because i have to go to the configuration window as i have to create a new configuration for the setting to appear so right now i have my regular shading configuration and you can see that i don't have part opening step i have only parts so in order to see it i have to create a completely new configuration this is the one and now i have a part opening step so i will add uh, regular dimensions for parts left and right edges bottom and top edges and i will also add dimensions for openings in the front view i will dimension also left and right top and bottom edges i will add the dimensions by the measure this time okay and now i will delete the dimensions in this view and use that new configuration that i just created yeah and you can see that dimensions or openings were added automatically and another feature for, for the dimensions is to add a material as a text node parameter. So now I can open parts again and I have the text node settings right here. So I will add the text node parameter and create the text nodes. And as this parameter, I will choose the material in the horizontal dimension. And that's it. I have this text node. And this is the material of this sheet right here. Okay, and the last one that I want to show you is that we can modify uh, the view, the views. So right now, uh, the detail section is created through the center of the frame. And we can see it in the frame front view if I unhide. If I show it in elements, this is where the section is created right now. So I can move it, for example, 
to where I have this opening. And if I now will use this view in a sheet template, it will be repeated for other assemblies. So I will not have to modify it for each assembly. So that is what I'm going to do. I will add this uh, frame front view. I will also add, let's see this, this sheeting view right here. I will try to align it better. Okay, I will also add a plan detail view. Let's see also some schedules for the mainframe, for the sheeting, and let's say that's it. And remember, I have that QR code. So now I will go back to the drawing configuration and I will see that I want to use the sheet as a template for my future assemblies. Okay, so this is the one that I just created and I can select it right here. Also, I will change the dimensioning rule that will be used for the sheeting because remember we created a new one where openings are dimensioned. Okay, and that's it. Let me go back to the 3D view and right now I can just keep on creating assemblies and all of the settings were created and saved so I can use them in this project on other walls and even in other projects. Okay, and that's it. The assembly is created. So let's see uh, the results. It's an assembly of the wall number 10. So again, the 3D view, the assembly front view, detail section view, and so on. We have the frame front view here. So you can see the settings for dimensions with that flipped RDNA dimension are repeated uh, because uh, we saved that configuration. Also the frame and sheeting configuration, the framing plan detail, the QR uh, assembly is also created. And previously I created this sheet manually with all of these views placed and yeah so this sheet is generated automatically and you can see i have this different qr code for it now let me open my slides again and encourage everyone who doesn't have a free trial to visit agcad.com and download a trial version so you could try out the software uh, yourself you can do that by going to agcad.com to the products let's see you can choose wood or metal framing products and uh, by you by clicking on free trial you will download our tools for bim doc uh, and download it for uh, the revit version that you need it and from the doc you will be able to download our tools and try them out there are some e-help pages getting started information that you can use to try them and also you can contact us if you will have any questions so now for those of you who don't have any questions today i want to say thank you uh, for attending the webinar i hope that you found out something new and i hope to see you in our future webinars have a nice day AGA CAD, building BIM together.